about 10 minutes. All the very best to Good morning. Today I am going to deliver a speech by Barack Obama and the theme of the speech is individual and collective responsibility of the new economy. And this was his campaign speech that he delivered at Spartansburg. And it goes like this. Today, we honor and think about great fathers. Our fathers who have set examples. Our fathers who have sacrificed everything. Our fathers who have been part of the economy. I think about my grandfather. My grandfather first became father when my mother was born at the Kansas Army base at the outset of World War II. When he left to fight fascism in Europe, my grandmother stayed back and she pitched in on the bomber assembly line. With a nation still dragging itself out of depression, I can feel, I can imagine how my grandfather must have felt. How uncertain the future was at that point of time. But, but thanks to this country, Yet he returned home. He returned home to a country that provided him the chance to go to the college on the GI Bill. Thanks to Housing Society, Federal Housing Authority, he got a house. And he moved into the Hawaii with the rest of his family. I think about my father-in-law too, Fraser Robinson. Now Fraser lived with his two kids, Craig and Michelle in Chicago, and with his wife, Marianne. Now, in 1960s, they faced what most of the African-American families faced at that point of time, both hidden and overt forms of racism that made it difficult for them to get the opportunity, required more efforts to get ahead. And with that, Fraser faced one more important problem. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And even if he had to rely on a walker, he went to that local water filtration plant for the rest of his life. And on that single salary, he worked and he managed to send Michelle and Craig to Princeton. And of course, I remember of him all the time, every time during Father's Day. I think about my own father. I don't know him well. He and my mother divorced when I was just two years old. And for the rest of my life, I only know him through the letters that he sent to my mother and the stories that grandparents told to me. Now, my mother raised me and my sister up in 1970s on a single salary. And I remember, I remember how at times we had to pass the whole month through food stamps. But due to support of my grandparents and the sheer will and determination of my mother, I was able to attend some of the best schools in the country schools that made it possible for me to stand here in front of all of you today. It has not been lost on either Michelle or myself, but our story has been America's story. A story of opportunity, a story of possibility, a story of tireless pursuit of a dream that was always within the reach. Our grandparents had their share of failings, and they had no guarantee. But theirs was a country, theirs was a country where if you are willing to work hard, where if you want to take the responsibility, you can provide your children the same chance <coughs> that my parents did. Though, there are fewer and fewer 
zero families today that can say the same story. If the soldiers that are returning, brave soldiers from Iraq and Afghanistan, they would be lucky if they come home to get a job or get the benefits that they once had as veterans. And they would be lucky. <coughs> and as all of you know, single parents don't have same support system that my mother did. There are too many fathers out there financially unable to help their children, even if their children wanted to do the right thing. But us is not a country that settled for survival of the fittest. But we are the nation who fight for the survival of the nation. And we have to do it again. And this won't be easy. There is a promise that holds the generation still. The other day, we heard from Joshua Stroman. Now he's a guy right here from South Carolina. But Josh lost his mother and father. He was just eight years old. And he also never knew his father. He was taken in by a family whose members were involved in gangs and drugs. He experimented with that lifestyle a bit. But his low point in life came when he was at jail at mere 18 years of age. And that's when he thought that his story would have a different ending. And he started to begin, he started to find comfort in his own faith. And when he moved out of jail, he moved in with the aunt who expected him to study hard and behave well. And he did. He would be at the Benedict College next year. And he is going to be president of student council next year. But out of everything, everything that he has said, his biggest dream is to someday stand in the front yard of his own home with his wife and kids. Who would hug him and say, I love you, Daddy. Now that's a dream. That's a dream that cannot be more simpler or more profound. It's a dream that has probably animated journey of so many fathers, so many mothers, so many young men like Josh who have felt that their dream was within the reach. But this is about the Josh. But now it is our task. It is our task as a nation to prove all those young men and all those young women and all those fathers and mothers out there that they were right all along. And that their dreams have power to become a possibility. And I look forward to working with all of you in making this come true. Over to you, Toastmaster.